coming to Barrett will guarantee you an excellent, stellar, rigorous education in a community in which you will feel loved and valued and supported each and every day and will give you middle and high school years that you will look back on fondly for the rest of your life. Only at Barrett will you find yourself in such an incredible and welcoming community where everybody absolutely wants to be there and wants to learn. I can always go like Uber and I came here that they had iPads because I didn't have them in my own school. Can we use our iPads all the time? Welcome to my digital classroom. I feel really lucky to have the opportunity to learn about my roots and my heritage, and most importantly, my values, because that makes me who I am. It just gives you this amazing opportunity to think in a different way, and to explore different ideas, and interact with students in your class. Students have incredible access to their teachers and to the administrators. I think our teachers here truly care so much for every individual student. It's just, it's just a great atmosphere, especially when you're having fun, you can learn so much better. Teachers are also really big on one-on-one -on -one time, so if you're struggling, it's great to like, get some help, and they encourage you to ask questions and be involved in class, which is one thing that I really enjoy about the school. is that you feel the spirit of being Jewish in everything around you. We hear over and over again from alumni that the friends that they made at Barrett are their lifelong friends. And you can't overstate the importance of that. That the community that we have and the friends that students make while they're here are friends that they will have for life. Barrett creates a community that absolutely encourages you to utilize your leadership skills and take role in your community. This is a very diverse community, a community of individuals. And this is where I'm supposed to be, it feels like. Everyone takes away something very different, but very special from this place, which has allowed so many people to say that they all loved what they learned, with whom they learned, from whom they learned, basically they loved where they learned. And that, that is the school out of there. I'm a Barrett student. 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 And I love where I learned. 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 Get to know Jack. And love where you learn. First, just like to thank my classmate Jonathan Neff for that wonderful video. <laughs> my name is Dan Kahana, and I'm the incoming Student Association President at Barrick. So I'm here as a representative of the Barrick student body to share a few words about this week's Parsha. This week's Parsha, as I'm sure many of you already know, is Parashat Behar. In Parashat Behar, like much of Aikra, the book of Leviticus, sets out a number of laws for the Jewish people. Many of these particular laws have to do with the Jubilee year, a year that comes once every 50 years, in which debts are erased, lands are returned, returned, and slaves are freed. While erasing our debts and freeing our slaves are not exactly commandments we can fulfill today, as a Jewish community, we are still able to capture the main idea of the Jubilee year. The year of Jubilee was a time in which the Jewish community stopped what it was doing and looked out for its members. A time in which the members of the community took a step back and made sure their kinsmen were doing okay. A time in which the entire community paused daily life to help those who had become burdened with debt and to free those who had become burdened with slavery. That idea, 
that in order to function as a strong Jewish community, we must from time to time take a step back and, make, and ensure that we are look, looking out for all of the community is very applicable to the reason we are all here today. We have been fortunate enough to have members of our community, such as the Levins, the Perloffs, and the Caymans, who are committed to our extended community, looking out for one another, for each new generation of students, and for others beyond the school's walls. The Parsha ends after a complex explanation by reminding the Jewish people who is the one giving them these laws. In doing so, the Torah ensures that amidst the excitement of the Jubilee year, we remember why it is we are following God's laws. From this we can learn that whether we are getting ready for the Jubilee or supporting our Jewish day school, we must remember that we're doing this for a higher purpose. I stand here today to thank those being honored for never losing sight of that purpose. Thank you. Dan, and thank you for your meaningful Divine Torah. Good evening, and Bruchim Habayim. My name is Cecily Carroll. In my capacity as President of Barak Hebrew Academy's Board of Directors and most appreciative mother of two Akiba Barak graduates, I am honored and delighted to warmly welcome each and every one of you to our 12th annual tribute event that marks the 67th anniversary of our school and proudly recognizes exceptional leaders within our community. We will hear more about our remarkable honorees shortly. Since we are blessed tonight with the presence of so many of our communal leaders my allotted time, regretfully, does not permit me to introduce you all by name. It is, however, my pleasure to very warmly welcome to the Philadelphia area and to our tribute event tonight, our new Federation of Greater Philadelphia CEO, Naomi Adler. Naomi, we know that you commenced your new role only a few days ago, and we are particularly honored by your presence. We extend our very best wishes to you and your family, and we look forward to many years of fruitful partnership. It is with a deep sense of loss that I note the palpable absence of an extraordinary community leader, Barak grandparent and member of the Barak Board of Trustees, Rabbi Aaron Landis, who passed away on Shabbat Chol Hamoed Pesach. Rabbi Landis was a giant amongst giants in our community, and he is already sorely missed by all who were so fortunate to have benefited from his wisdom and kindness. I know you all join me in extending our most sincere condolences to his beloved wife, Sora, and to his children and grandchildren. May his memory be a blessing to all who knew him. This school year marked the extremely successful opening and operation of our expanded middle school, thanks to our outstanding professional leaders and their teams who dedicate their life's work to our students and lay leaders who inspire the rest of us to boldness. Generations of devoted alumni across the globe continue to make us proud and we celebrate the presence of 44 <coughs> legacy students amongst our current student body loving where they learn. I express my heartfelt gratitude to you all, our partners, for your investment in Barak Hebrew Academy and thereby helping to secure our Jewish future. 
And now it is my privilege and honor to invite and welcome to the podium the Honorable Yaron Seidman, Consul General of Israel to the Mid-Atlantic region.
Thank you, Yaron, and I so appreciate everything that you and your wife, Tommy, and everyone at the consulate does for us at Barrett. Um, this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. In our search for that one perfect card, I'm sure that you have found, as I have, that many of them have the same theme, the same message. Mother, it is not just today that we celebrate you, but every day of the year. Tonight, our tribute event celebrates our year of achievement and the honorees who help make those achievements possible. But it is not just tonight, but every day at Barrick that we celebrate our achievements and continue our strivings that, so that our students and that all within the Barrick community see the power of possibility in everything we do. All of our honorees tonight, whether as middle school students or upper school students or graduating seniors or alumni or community leaders or as a teacher, have helped us become future ready, have challenged us with everything they teach, they learn, and they accomplish to think in terms of the why not and the what if. It is that mindset shared by all of tonight's honorees that has led us to become a school of 350 students and growing, a school with a newly integrated and vibrant middle school, a school with 44 legacy students whose parents and grandparents attended our school. A school where there is a magic formula that blends the Jewish and the secular, the individual and the community. A school that proudly and currently employs eight alumni on our staff and faculty. In this special year of achievement, we have placed special emphasis on our alumni. It has been my very great pleasure to have met this year with alumni in reunions held in San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, and just a week ago in our barrack building, a milestone reunion attended by over 100 alumni and their teachers with past students going back to the graduating class of 1952. In 1946, our school was founded by people with extraordinary vision, abounding hope, and yes, a major dose of chutzpah. Our founders wanted a school where 68 years later, students would happily say that they love where they learn which is our new tagline developed from our alumni questionnaire. I want to wish Mazel Tov to all of our honorees and thank you from the bottom of my heart for all you do for helping to help us to continue our magnificent tradition.
would like to thank you all for being here tonight to support Jack and Barrett Hebrew Academy and to help honor our parents, Ray and Lori. Hi, I'm Danielle Levin, and I'm a Barrett alum, class of 2012. For me, switching to Barrett for high school was the best decision that I've ever made. My experience at Barrett encouraged me to grow as a person, to challenge myself every day, and to learn how to be an independent thinker. When I got to college, I was more prepared than most of the other students that I encountered my freshman year because Barrick provided me with the proper tools. Because of Barrick, I am a leader. Because of Barrick, I am confident, creative, and caring. Because of Barrick, I have a strong sense of my identity, and I am very passionate about making the world a better place. Barrick has shaped who I am, and my high school experience is a gift that will never stop giving. Hello, I am Michael Levin, and I'm currently a junior at Barrick. I remember the first day I ever visited Barrick. My parents told me just to try it, to see how I would like, to see how I would like it. When I spent just one day, I knew I felt something really special. I couldn't fully explain it or put it into words for my friends back in public in my public school, but something made me feel like I was stepping into a whole new world that I had never experienced before. Now, six years later, what I realized I felt that first day was that Barrick is a community that helps shape strong, responsible students who become self-motivated to work hard, do well, and discover their passions. When I first stepped onto campus in 2008, what I really felt was the comfort of stepping into a community where I knew I could find success in a more personal setting with people around me who wanted to help me do the best I could for myself. And the first people to exhibit this newfound power of community were my parents, and I'd especially like to thank them for that. like to introduce our parents who have provided us with this amazing gift and have committed so much of their time and energy into this amazing place. Development Office <laughs> for your love and your support. Avi, Michelle, Josh, Hannah, Shira, and Barnett. It is a privilege and an honor to be sharing this evening with you. Sending Danielle and Michael to Barrick has enhanced our lives in a way nothing else has. And it was and is truly a gift, and we are thankful for our experiences that we have been able to give back, and I'm sorry, we are thankful our experiences and we have been able to give back in such an impactful way to the wonderful learning institution that gave so much to our family. We have been involved in so many projects, programs, and committees at Barrick since 2008, but the contribution that we believe we are most recognized for is the design and management over the construction of our new middle school wing. We offered to take on this project because we knew, with Ray's experience and my work ethic, <laughs> we would be able to get the project done right and within budget. In February 2013, we agreed to oversee the building of the Robert Saligman Middle School of the Jack M. Barrett Hebrew Academy. There was one small problem. The school's name had more words, 11, than the actual months we had to complete the job. <laughs> but give the Levins a job and it will get done. And believe me, there was no way we were going to disappoint this community. Because of permit requirements, federation approval process, 
a bat mitzvah planning on using the hotel rooms, we were unable to start this project until early June. That left us three months until the students would be arriving back at school expecting their new middle school to be ready to learn it. We kept focused and on top of the construction company, and we are very proud to say we were successful in opening the entire middle and upper schools on time with, I say 351 students, I know Sharon said 350, but very close. <laughs> Maybe I was that additional student, because the plus students all know me. This project took tenacity and imagination to get to where it is today. The original planned and agreed upon location was across the parking lot in the athletic building. But that just didn't make sense to us. Ray and I felt that we should evaluate using the hotel wing for the middle school. It was rarely used and we were not in the hotel business, we were a school. The hotel space would provide the most number of uniformed classrooms and the best atmosphere for the overall middle school experience. This option was also going to be able to accommodate the promised Beit Midrash space dedicated for middle school prayer, but still in a location that the whole school would be able to benefit from and enjoy using. The convenience of the middle school's location to the upper school was going to complete our goal regarding this community partnership with Perlman. Uniting the two schools, each with their own separate areas, but tied together with a common entrance. Last summer, we were often asked, why are you involved in this middle school project? You don't even have a child in middle school. We knew if we were involved in this project, building the school, this community dream of a unified middle school would be a reality. And it sure is. We currently have over 150 middle school students learning in this spectacular and warm school wing. So the reason why we are so passionate about what we do, and probably why we're standing here today, is because we believe that everyone in our community benefits from Barrack and our Jewish day schools. And that a Jewish day school dedication I'm sorry, a Jewish day school education. <laughs> I'm not wearing my glasses. Jewish day school education is one of the most compelling and effective ways to inspire young people to develop a strong, confident Jewish identity. Day school graduates often become the leaders who invigorate and sustain the Jewish community for the future of the future. We are strong and we are a strong and viable school. Support from the community, like everybody we have here tonight, helps to make us even stronger. Thank you so much for giving us the honor to make a difference in both Barrack and the Jewish communities. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Joshua Perloff and I am currently a senior, graduating in just over a month, part of the class of <laughs> uh, What many of you do not know is how much time my grandmother has put back into the school. Aside from any other positions and titles she may have, ha have had in the past, she has been the alumni president for about a fifth of the school's history. <laughs> that wasn't the joke. <laughs> that, that was the serious part. So picture that, okay? In doing so, she has not only created strong and lasting relationships with many of you in the room tonight, but she has also become a walking directory. She knows your names, your addresses, or at least generally where you live, your occupations, 
and everything concerning her spouse and children's lives. She works endlessly to ensure that the community of Akiba, and now Barrick alumni, continues to grow and be there for our future graduates. She asks nothing in return. Except for your generosity, continued activism in the community outreach, and that you're always <laughs> remaining only a phone call away. <laughs> so, with that, ladies and gentlemen, Avi Katz. Is one of Josh's is <laughs> Good evening. We are so proud and humbled to be honored as a three-generation Akiba Barrack family this evening. I know that the words continuity, leadership, and legacy are often associated with our school, but for us they truly have a special meaning. I received an outstanding secular and Jewish education at Akiba made friends for life, some who are here tonight, and had the opportunity to lead in many ways, knowledge, values, traditions, and leadership roles that laid the foundation for my life as an adult. Alan and I wanted the same stellar education for our daughter, Michelle, who in turn wanted these exceptional opportunities for her three children, our grandchildren, Joshua, 2014, Hannah 2016 and Shira 2019. They will, as Michelle and I continue to do today, go on to celebrate Jewish life, learning, living, and values in all their rich diversity and contribute to the world at large. What better legacy could we all wish for? On behalf of Alan, my daughter, grandchildren, a very heartfelt thank you. Together may we all and our school go from strength to strength. Hi, I'm Hannah, class of 16. I'm Shira, class of 19. <laughs> Mom, we are so appreciative of the countless things you do for us. We could not ask for a better role, role model, advice giver, but most importantly, you. You are the strongest woman we know and have been the rock of our family as a full-time mom, nurse, and volunteer. You have set an example as one who has reinvented your career and have even gone back to school more than once. We feel honored to share this school connection with you and mom and hope to make you proud of this legacy. Ladies and gentlemen, Michelle Perlow. We are very proud to be honored this evening as a three-generation Akiba Barrick family. When I am asked what binds together my mother's school experiences with mine and my three children, my answer is always community. A caring, supportive, enriching community that not only fosters a love of learning steeped in Jewish values and traditions, but makes us all feel like mishpacha. Here we are truly family. When Jay was ill, we were grateful for the support of meals, rides, sleepovers, and visits. This sense of community has enriched our lives in so many ways, including fostering friendships formed in school that we treasure today. Joshua, Hannah, and Shira are also enjoying friendships that I anticipate will be lifelong, as well as a commitment to community. In the beginning, Jay was actually not on board with the day school education. However, when he found out there would be no Hebrew school and more time for tennis, he was convinced. <laughs> Actually, he used to joke that um, we chose day school for Jewish values and a kosher dairy lunch. Right. 
Together, Jay and I embrace learning and observing with our children. The experiences we have had and continue to have also inspire us to carry on another Jewish tradition of tikkun olam, of making our community and the world a better place. On behalf of three generations of Akiba Barrack family, thank you and congratulations to all the honorees this evening. to present our father with this honor, and we'd like to congratulate all of the honorees this evening. I think we speak on behalf of Brian and Rachel, our two older siblings, along with my mother and the rest of our family, when we say that we are so proud of our dad and feel especially appreciative that his colleagues and students recognize his tremendous dedication to his teaching and to this school. Not everyone has the opportunity to have their parent as their teacher, but both Ari and I had Mr. Kamen for a few different Bible classes. <laughs> when we took his classes, we were frankly quite surprised because we never knew he could talk so much in one sitting. <laughs> if you've ever known my dad socially, you may have picked up on the fact that he's not one for chit chat, and he's not what you would call a social butterfly. Sorry, I told you I'd roast you a little bit. <laughs> While at home, Barnett is a man of few words and simple taste and style, but when he's put in the classroom, that's when he really comes alive. His passion for the subject matter, and most importantly his students, is so evident in the way he conducts and leads his class. His eyes light up when he gets started on Maimonides, and whether Abraham was a historical figure or historical fiction, and on the many proofs of the existence of God. He's, he teaches not by lecturing, but by forcing his students to think critically about the subject, knowing that there really is no right answer, just how well you can prove your claim. And as a result, for all my adult life, whenever I meet another Akiba alum, I am more commonly known as Mr. Kamen's daughter rather than as Monica, and am immediately bombarded with stories from his class and told that my dad is one of his favorite, one of their all-time favorite teachers. He taught us to love learning purely for learning's sake a Jewish value that I know Barrett prides itself on institutionally, and I really believe that my dad exemplifies. Ari and I both currently work at progressive political organizations in New York and DC respectively, fighting for social and economic justice for working families. Our dad's participation as head of the teachers union has had a lasting impact on both of us and on the way we see, our, we see the world and our place in it as change makers. He taught us the vow to value happiness and passion over monetary gain, and as nonprofit workers, this is sometimes to all of our chagrin, <laughs> he taught us about tikkun olam, that we should not accept what we don't like about the world, but that we have a responsibility to ourselves and others to try and make it better. And most importantly, he has inspired us to try and do good in the world. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ari Kamen. I'm from the class of 2004, um, just 10 years ago, which seems like a really long time to me. Um, I was thinking back, I was taking the train down from New York uh, tonight, and I was thinking about what I remember from high school and middle, uh, middle school at Akiba. And my Hebrew is rusty, uh, which is a nice way of putting it. Uh, I have a mnemonic device of, uh, please excuse my dear Akiba student, but I have no idea how to apply it. And if Mrs. McMichael asked me to, to conjugate to be in Latin, I'd have very little success at it at all. Um, but those facts and those, those the figures and things that you learn like that, that's not what Akiba's about. Uh, my dad taught me and what other teachers have taught me and what my dad has been able to teach countless students at Akiba is that what you learn in high school is learning how to learn. It's basically activating the fundamental thirst for knowledge and understanding that every child has and every child needs a strong, good teacher to be able to activate. 
I learned that from Akiba. I learned that from my dad, uh, and uh, I'm very proud to be able to thank everyone for honoring him tonight and imparting on me and all Akiba students uh, and Barrett students as well um, that fundamental love of learning and love of understanding and knowledge. And so it's really special that we get to present him with this award. So Dad, thank you for everything you've taught us, for being a true mensch, and for teaching by example, and for being such a wonderful and supportive father and teacher. We're so lucky and we're so proud of you. I promised you I wouldn't cry, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> uh, to my fellow honorees, congratulations. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my fellow members for selecting, my fellow members of the faculty for selecting me for this great honor. In 2008, I was invited by the graduating class to deliver the commencement address. In addition to that, I've had three yearbook dedications. Being recognized by your students is clearly a great honor. Today, I'm equally honored to be recognized by my fellow faculty members. There are so many other outstanding members of this faculty that could be standing here as well. This speaks volumes about the quality of our faculty. I am proud to represent them as co-president of the union. In preparing these words, I thought I could easily go back to the speech I made at graduation. I was hoping that your memory is like mine, and those who were here would have forgotten by now what I said. <laughs> Unfortunately, when I was discussing ideas for the speech with Monica, she made me promise that I would not rehash that speech, so I had to try to come up with something original, so here goes. I have another job where I work with volunteer teachers at a Hebrew school. I get to observe them in the classroom and give them suggestions for improvement. During one session, I observed students reciting poems that they wrote about their sacred space. One student's poem was about his being on the golf course. Another wrote about playing video games. Another described a picnic with her brother. While they were reciting these poems, I thought about my sacred space. The first place that came to mind was my classroom. The problems of the world do not exist in there. It doesn't matter what is going on in my life outside the classroom. When I walk into it, they disappear. I've been told on many occasions that I cannot stop smiling during class. Even when I'm scolding someone, which uh, of course rarely happens when we call it our students, <laughs> I will still smile. My wife and children can constantly tell me that I'm a different person in the classroom than you just, just heard. Uh, normally I'm quiet and reserved, but in the classroom I become animated and speak in a different tone of voice. You, the parents, and my students have given me this sacred task. You have entrusted me with what you love and value the most, the mind and the heart of your child. I have tried my best to fulfill this trust. I was interviewed by members of the Chronicle, the student newspaper, about how I felt about being honored. I struggled with that question. Other than saying that I feel honored, I didn't have a good answer. But when they asked me about my relationship with my students, I felt a little more secure in answering. I quoted Rashi in his comment to the Via Hafta. He wrote that, Vishinantam Levanecha, and you will teach your children diligently, does not mean your biological children, even though I did have the thrill of teaching three of them, but your students. I try as best as I can to treat my students the same way I treated my own children in the classroom. That is what makes it a sacred task for me. So I want to thank you all for coming tonight and sharing in my honor. In the same way that I promised to consider my teaching a sacred task, I hope that you will continue to give the school the support it needs and deserves. Thank you. Thank you and congratulations to all the honorees this evening. My name is
name is Eva Weiner, and I'm currently an 11th grade student at Barrack Hebrew Academy, and I've attended Barrack since sixth grade. Yerushalayim shel shel zachav, v'shel nechoshach v'shel or, halalacho shirai ani kinor. These words from Naomi Shemer's famous song, Jerusalem of Gold, have been familiar to me since I was a little girl. However, these song lyrics have taken on a deeper meaning for me since my transformative experience this past fall with my Barrett classmates at the Alexander Muss High School in Israel. When I hear these words now, I am immediately transported back to the first time we sang them on Muss when we stood atop Harat Sophim overlooking the old city of Jerusalem. Just as the sun was setting, with its light reflecting off of the glistening Jerusalem stones, our teachers facilitated a discussion as we gazed at the magnificent vista below us. Within minutes of our arrival, we put our arms around each other as the evocative melody and words of Yerushalayim Shalvachav emerged from our lips. For some of my classmates, this was their first trip to Israel. But even for me, and for many others, who had traveled to Israel many times before, it felt like a whole new experience. Being on Musk with my friends enabled me to see Israel in a whole new way, so that in a sense, it felt like I was there for the first time as well. The Musk Israel experience had a profound impact on me, academically, religiously, and communally. Studying in Israel for the trimester caused me to engage in my studies in a way that I had not done before. As you know, there is a tremendous amount of pressure that may be associated with a rigorous academic course load like the one that is offered here at Jack and Barrett Hebrew Academy. This is especially true in high school as we have to balance our schoolwork and extracurricular activities with the demanding college application process. In the midst of a process that can be tension built, it was so invigorating and intellectually stimulating to be able to learn for the sake of learning, known in Hebrew as Lishma. Learning Lishma enabled each of us to become intensely engaged in our studies. The experiential aspects of our studies further strengthen this intense engagement. Not only did we take classes on the Musk campus in Hoda Sharon, we also traveled to many of those places as well. In a sense, they became our classrooms. For example, we learned about the birth of Zionism, and the following day, we went to Tel Aviv to further our learning on the actual site. Now that I'm back in the States, I find myself more engaged in Israel advocacy and other global issues than I had ever been before. I credit the Musk experience with making me more knowledgeable and more motivated to act on behalf of Israel. In addition to the academic impact of Musk, I also feel that I was transformed in a religious sense by the experience. Growing up as an observant conservative Jew, Judaism has always been a big part of my life. Starting with my family, I was raised with a mother as a rabbi and a father as a part-time cancer. I have always been immersed in a Jewish environment at home, in my synagogue, and of course, at school. But admittedly, until I went on Mus, Judaism had always been an obligation that was imposed on me by others. That does not mean that I was ever reluctant to be Jewish, but I never felt that my religious commitment was much, of, was much of a choice. But after spending three months in Israel, my personal passion for Judaism drastically increased. Being away from home made me realize how much I love being Jewish and participating in the Jewish community. As a teenager, my connection to Judaism has become a choice as well as an obligation. I will never forget the way I felt when my classmates and I down in Shafri after the challenging walk in the blistering heat of Masada. I will never forget the way we held each other closely as we recited Yisgur at my Donik concentration camp during our week-long trip to Poland. I will never forget where we sang our hearts out in a cave and spot with Jews from all over the world. I will never forget the way we danced together at a shul in Krakow during Kabbalah Shabbat during our hands and our hearts with other Americans, as well as Israelis, Italians, Brits, and Brazilians. These memories of powerful experiences shared with my classmates represent just a few of the many reasons that I now embrace my religion willingly. 
These experiences truly triggered my passion for Judaism. But most of all, it was my classmates that made the Alexander Muss High School in Israel program a life-changing experience. Yes, I grew as an individual, but my personal experience was inspiring because of the collective impact of the class as a whole. I feel so fortunate to have been able to participate in MUS, and I hope that other Barrett students have this opportunity in the future. It was a transformative experience for me as an individual, but even more so for us as a community. investment we've ever made. All four children are independent. <laughs> Very independent. Sometimes a little too independent, but I won't go there. I have uh, two married kids, both married Jewish. We have a grandson, Zeta. 
and Safka. And uh, a week from Sunday on Lagba Omer, we will be back in Israel because our youngest daughter, one of the twins, Jessica, will be getting married in Israel. And uh, then we'll be back to New York and study to become a Jewish educator. And uh, Amy, her twin sister, last month made Aliyah. So, uh, you know, she said to me, uh, Abba, you know, you sent me to Jewish day school, Jewish camp, you sent me to Israel every year, what did you think was going to happen? I'm like, not that. <laughs> but we're very, very proud of her and uh, looking forward to tremendous, tremendous things from all of them. I will tell you that the must experience from a purely practical standpoint, all four children, first of all, four children got into the colleges that they wanted to go to, and all four of them said the same thing when they got there. It was such an easy transition for them. That their, their classmates in college, it's the first time away from home, the first time they had to cook their own meals, the first time they had to make their own beds. And our kids that had experienced three months away or five months away or what it was, they're like, it's no big deal, been there, done that. So the, the experience is just a life-changing experience. It truly is. And the other thing that I want to share with you, because in a minute I'm going to ask you for money to help fund this program. <laughs> but I want to share something with you. Think of what this money is doing. It is, we're asking for scholarship money. Last year you had, what, 24 kids go? Next year, next year, God willing, the school will be sending 59 children. That's a lot of kids. That's a lot of kids. That's an incredible experience. But here's what I want you to think about. It's not just the preparation for college. It's not just the I'm a Jew experience. It is the life altering, we have the opportunity literally to deflect these kids in a direction that we want to go into and to possibly change the course of their lifetime. And all it's going to take is money to do it. It's as simple as that. It's the truth. Hey, I'm very practical. It's the truth. It costs about $12,500 to send a child on us. So, with that in mind, and a lot of these kids, 59 kids are going, a lot of scholarship, over 60% of the kids will be on scholarship. I know you've all contributed to be here. I know you were all generous within the community and to the school. This is above and beyond that. But I'm telling you, these are dollars well spent. They're well spent. With that in mind, I'd love for one person to stand up and send two kids to must for me, 25 grand. Anybody in this room giving $25,000? Promise you will sleep well at night. I know there are people that can do it. Yes? Michael, thank you so much for that. I wasn't even expecting that. You made my day. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Wow. All right, I got one. Anybody else? I'm on a roll. 25,000? How about 12,500 to send a kid on bus? I'm telling you, it's a life changing experience. $12,500? Oh, boy, with the camera, I almost had to control it. You have no idea how close you were to spending $12,500. Actually, not spending it, it would have been an absolutely incredible investment. Anybody, $12,500? All right, now we're going to do an increments of high. Everything in my life is an increments of high. I put gasoline in my car, always ended at 36 cents or 18 cents or more. I have a great life. Hey, it's working. You know, what can I tell you? I love my life. All right, $7,200. Our honorees. Thank you, Bill. Anybody else? 7,200? The Barrett family, thank you so very much for the continued support. 7,200 dollars. By the way, just put up your hand and one of these uh, students will come up. Wow, a third. Thank you so much. Woo! 7,200. I got three. One more. 7,200. Going once, twice. All right. I'll jump down, ground, jump right down to $3,600. Now, $3,600, by the way, oh, it's not even on here. I'm supposed to go to $5,000, but forget, forget $5,000. I'm going to go right to $3,600. $3,600 will help taking the kids to Poland as part of this trip. I will tell you, Robin was a nurse on uh, March of the Living, and I went along one year as a big kid, and uh, it was one of the most impactful, meaningful experiences of my life. I hated every second in Poland but I will never forget it as long as I live. And I will never forget where we came from and our heritage, that being a huge, huge part of it. And then going back to Israel and realizing the rebirth of the Jewish people and, and what we've accomplished so far. 
$3,600. Just gonna help me out with $3,600. $36? I get 72, so 25,000 loaded. 36? 36 going once. All right, $1,800. It's high, it's $1,800. The stock market had a very good day. I can guarantee you a bunch of people in this room made $1,800 easily in the market, which is the green side of your ledger over there. Here we go. Keep your hands up, 3600 One, two, this side of the room, I'm very proud of, thank you, Robin. I'm very excited, very uh, proud of this side. This side of the room, not so much yet. Just saying, we're gonna have an opportunity in a second. I have three people at, uh, at $1,800. Anybody else, 1800 Put up your hand, okay? There's another one. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. $1,000 will pay for a four-day hike from the Canary to the Mediterranean. Did you do that? Yeah. So, clearly not a hiking person, and I thought... <laughs> But it was honestly, I had some knee problems, but it was four of the best days of my life, of months. It was not just hiking, but like in exploring Israel, but you're just with your classmates, completely emerging and everything you could possibly, and it's just, like, I can't even begin to describe like the bonding experience that it was and how much of an asset it was to the MOSS program. There you go, a thousand bucks. $1,000 and we can say that we have 59, 59 kids going, so it's 59,000. We have $1,000 in the back room. Thank you so very much. I'll be $1,000. It's a couple of months, no big deal. Thank you so very much, Jen and Ami. Anybody else? $1,000? $1,000 over here. Somebody grab it quick. $1,000. Rob, we'll do $1,000. All right, $1,000 for the taxes. Anybody else? $1,000, thank you. Anybody else? Last chance, $1,000. All right, five. Oh, nice. Thank you. Oh, uh, two more. I'm going to do 500 and 180. Just keep that in mind. $500 will sponsor a Shabbat in Svat. If you have been to Svat, I don't need to explain this to you. If you have not been to Svat, it is the, well, theoretically, the spiritual capital of the world. It is an incredible, incredible experience. Uh, my two younger daughters who have been living in Israel for a year go there often for Shabbat and Sunday we get that phone call telling us because they're all excited about it, telling us all about their Shabbat spot. It's hard to say three times quickly. But anyway, $500 will pay for Shabbat in spot. The owner verse one, $500. Thank you so very much. Sharon, $500. Hey, we need some people over here. Quick! This, this side woke up all of a sudden. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hands up, hands up, somebody will find you. $500 over here. Thank you so very much. Anybody else? Over the side, grab him. Thank you so much. $500. And please, thank you. Oh, I won't even tell myself. $500 right here. Anybody else? Last chance. $500, $500. All right, last but not least, everybody can do this. This is like dinner for two. If you go to Citroën Rose, it's in for four. 180 bucks, 180 dollars. Let's see some hands, and let's, kids, you have to move quickly on this. Hands up, 180 dollars. Thank you. Wow, we even have faculty putting their hands up for this. Thank you, Trace. 180 dollars, show me, show me some love. Show me some love, back in the room. Karen, thank you, Andrea, over here, somebody grab her. 180, anybody else? Back in the room. Last chance. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to, I have no idea how much we just raised. It was a bunch of money. Thank you. Wait, turn around. Grab her. I have no idea how much money we raised. Grab one of the kids. Quick. I have no idea how much money we raised, but I can guarantee you, guarantee you these are meaningful dollars that will do incredible things for some incredible kids. And the fact that we have 59 children going to Israel for the next year. So it's an awful lot of the future. I want to thank you so very much. All right. So I have really good news. We are done with the microphone. I would like to ask alumni, and there's a whole bunch of alumni, any alumni in the room, as soon as I'm done, wait till I'm done talking, as soon as I'm done, alumni to come up here, we're gonna take a picture of all the alumni, and the rest of you get to go that away for dessert and coffee, and we cannot thank you enough for everything. Continue your support, you're all anxious, thank you.